Well, for today, I hope to be mid-pack. I was really just hoping that I would make the cut uh, coming up here, and now it looks like I, I could do mid-pack. And uh, I hope this leads to something more in the future, hopefully uh, a ride at Baja, or of course my holy grail would be Dakar. And um, who knows? In 2004, you started racing. That was after a trip to Italy. What happened in Italy? Well, I went over to Italy to uh, finish my last two classes for my degree in photography. And while I was there, every weekend, I either rented a car, a motorcycle, or a scooter and went riding in the mountains. And, well, the the one that really pushed me over the edge, so to speak, was uh, we'd rented a Golf turbo diesel, and we're going up the west coast of Italy, and I accidentally wound up on a mountain pass in front of a couple of fully caged rally cars that were out playing around. And... Oh, about 20 minutes later, and two green screaming friends, I pulled over in the shadow of a castle and shaking hands and a little trickle of a tear in my eye, I uh, figured I needed to go do something like that and came back and a month later I was racing. Did you do autocross first? That was the first thing I did. It was trying to find something I could afford. The, the real dream, the way it all started was if you could do anything you wanted. If I won the lottery tomorrow, what would I go do? I'd go rally racing. And so I came home and let's see what I can do. And I got on the internet and I found a SCCA solo and I, a month later I started autocrossing in my brother's car and uh, went from there. Was that the Honda Del Slow? That was the Honda Del Slow. That was a painful, painful car to drive. It was all stock. I even took it to the national tour on a, on a factory original shocks and um, wasn't too terribly bad. It wasn't it was probably more like I'm doing here. <laughs> but then you moved on to a Mini at some point? Uh-huh. I talked my way into probably 40 cars in the first year I was driving, and I was at uh, Evolution Driving School, and a guy let me borrow his Mini, and five days later I was standing in the dealership with my money and did my custom order, and uh, my first Nationals, I was 14th, and the second, I was second. And then you moved on to land speed racing? Yes, I... Uh, made the mistake of watching the world's fastest Indian and about 20 or 30 times and decided in 2007 that I wanted to go out and see if I could find a ride at Bonneville and uh, managed to make my way out there and crewed with a team for a little while on the promise of a, of a run and they got scared and backed out because they didn't really know if I could do it and someone I didn't even know let me take my rookie run and when I got home, my uh, phone rang, and a man I'd met out there said, do you want to drive my Lakester? And I said, of course. <laughs> then you got involved in Baja 1000. Tell me about that. I did. I went and navigated in a uh, Class C truck with uh, Chris Raffo, uh, Rass Raffo Racing. And um, that was one of the most grueling and amazing spiritual experiences I've ever had. So you raced Baja, you've done some land speed racing, and now you're going to do Pikes Peak. What brought you to Pikes Peak? Well, Pikes Peak is something that I've always known about and always wanted to do, but it really became urgent and necessary to be here after I came and spectated in 2005. I just, after seeing the people go up, I was like, this is something I have to do, and then to discover that they're paving it, and then what makes it so great and the real history behind it was going to go away. And to find out this year how much they're going to pave, how much they didn't pave last year, and how much they're going to pave this year, that it was now or never. Because if I didn't come now, it's going to be gone. So that's what really put the rush on. So what's your favorite part of this track? I'm surprised to find that I really like the, uh, the top. I, I was thought I would be scared of it, and I fell in love with it. You're running in the 750 class, and you're out there with riders like uh, uh, Gary Tracy, uh, Davey Durrell. What's it like being on the line with those guys? It's, it's very special. It's one of the things I've really looked for in my racing is to compete at the highest levels that I can. And I think this is about the best I've ever done. So what are your hopes for today? Uh, if I'm mid-pack, I'll be real happy. And I'll have to fight pretty hard to do that. So what's next after Pikes Peak? Well, very next after Pikes Peak, I will uh, hopefully have the lakes to ready again. And we'll be back at Bonneville. We're trying to go for a... A record around 2.30. That'll get me in the 200 mile an hour club, get me that red hat I want so bad. And then um, in September, I'll go for a B 
BMOD Open Class National Championship in SCCA solo and um, hoping to find a, a ride for Baja and uh, who knows what else. I've seen you uh, running on the mountain and uh, you look pretty tough out there. You look pretty aggressive. Um, is it true what they say about you that you'll race for food? I will race for anything. 